Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're back in Dorset at the pretty village of Pentridge. It's about 12 miles south of Salisbury, 12 miles northeast of Blandford, just off the A354 road, which is the main sort of Salisbury to Blandford road. And today we're going to be doing a very roughly four mile circular route, pretty undulating. I can promise you one thing, some of the most beautiful, stunning views in all of Dorset. So do join us. Now I'm going to be doing something slightly different today in that I'm going to be doing the video in partnership on a voluntary basis with the Chase and Chalk Landscape Partnership. It's a National Lottery Heritage Fund scheme to protect and enhance the special landscape of the Cranbourne Chase and Chalk Valley through about 20 projects focused on the natural, historic and cultural assets of uh, this important area. I'll put uh, some details up on screen, their website uh, address and what have you. Do check them out and that way you can find a little bit more of what they get up to. But the Cranbourne Chase itself is uh, quite a vast area. Uh, it's uh, an area of outstanding natural beauty and it covers about 380 square miles of countryside overlapping the, the boundaries of Wiltshire, Dorset, Hampshire and uh, Somerset. Now the area that's covered by the Chase and Chalk Landscape Partnership lies between sort of Shaftesbury and Blandford Forum in the west to Coombe Bissett in the east. Now I'm filming uh, in the morning on a beautiful early spring day. The sun is out. It is bitterly cold at the moment. It's about four or five degrees so that's why we're all wrapped up. Anyway, are we ready to go? Let's go. Well I've parked my car at the village green which is just by the church. It's a very small village there's just one road in and one road out. The name Pentridge is uh, Celtic for uh, Hill of the Boar. Hopefully we won't uh, come across too many of uh, those during our walk today. Well before we step out into the countryside let's have a little look at the church which is just behind me here. And there it is, St Rumbold's Church. It's relatively new. The chancel was built in 1815 and the remainder, including the West Tower, Nave and South Porch, was built between 1855 and 1857, very much in a 14th century style. And it's got a very unusual broached spire. It uh, looks lovely in the morning sunshine. Now there's just one gravestone that I want to show you. It's very uh, close to the porch and it's just by me here. I'll just uh, show you, there they are, the grave of Roland B. Beaumont. And he was a villager, uh, very much one of the few. He was a fighter pilot in World War II. And amongst other achievements, he accounted for at least 31 V1 doodlebugs. Anyway, after the war he became a test pilot for the uh, TSR-2 supersonic bomber and indeed was the first Briton to fly supersonic, i.e. faster than the speed of sound. And he held the record for the fastest Atlantic crossing at one stage and set three transatlantic records in the Canberra jet and he was awarded the Britannia Trophy in 1952 for the first double Atlantic flight in one day. Wow, the sun is out in all its glory. It's beautiful now. I think I'll be able to take Logan's fleece off. So we're going to start to heading out into the countryside, heading northwards away from the church, just past a lovely house, Meadow Cottage, and next to it, the old 19th century school building which I believe is now the village hall. Well, we haven't gone far and already we're getting some brilliant views. Uh, now the sun is quite low <laughs> so uh, hopefully it's not going to cause too much of a glare but uh, 
The hill in the far distance, that's Pentridge Down and that's where we will be heading on the, the homeward bound leg and I'll pan round, hopefully the sun's not going to cause too much glare. That, uh, those trees at the very top of that hill there, that's Pembury Knoll, an Iron Age hill fort, and we'll be seeing uh, that a little bit later on. now heading out of the, the village. Now if you look on an ordnance survey map you'll see two parallel dotted lines and the word cursus and it relates to something known as the Dorset Cursus and it's one of uh, the largest uh, prehistoric monuments in the UK but in some ways one of the, the least known. Now <laughs> there's not a lot to see on the ground so if I just slowly turn around, that is uh, looking sort of southwards. The Cursus, it spans about six and a half miles and it uh, consists of two parallel banks about one and a half metres tall and about, I don't know, two metres wide, something like that. And each bank is 82 metres apart. And by each bank there was a a ditch about one and a half metres deep, two metres wide. No one's 100% sure um, what it was for. And what's difficult now is it, there's so little to see. Most of it's all been pl ploughed over. Uh, it's thought that it was possibly some sort of ancient um, highway or a, had a religious or um, ceremonial purpose. Certainly there are quite a few burial mounds uh, along the route and it consists of a lot of straight lines with just sudden changes in direction. But you're talking about something that was made 3,000, 3,500 BC, something like that. But as I said, there's not a lot to see and all I can do is just show you roughly where it is. In fact, just behind me here, there's, uh, it goes northwards. Or well, just at uh, one of the bends on the road that leaves out of the village, we're going to start uh, heading very much northwards along this little track here. It looks very much like a, a sunken track and it's called Bowling Green Lane, which is quite intriguing because I, I, uh, I can't see that there is a bowling green nearby. But uh, this is very much the start of our long ascent up to the Bockerley Dyke. I know quite a few folk follow these videos and then uh, do the walk afterwards. You're not going to get lost on this walk, but this is just one area just to, to look out for. It's uh, a footpath sign and you just need to make sure you go to the right and not to the left. And uh, I'm going to say continuing up this uh, sunken track. And as you go up here, you're going to get some terrific views either side, very much open, almost like a chalkland and it's an ideal landscape for hares. So we're going to keep our eyes peeled for some of those hopefully. I'm just looking out over this luscious uh, field of wheat I think it is and I can just about make out a hare. Now it's going to be pointless me trying to uh, to show you on the GoPro, <laughs> but roughly out there, I'll get my um, Canon out and uh, see if I can take a zoom shot. I took a photo of one a few seconds ago, 
and it was so difficult to see it looked like a, a mound of earth but I could just make out its beady eye looking at me and I saw another well there was a pair of them it was so far in the distance uh, it may, might be a very hazy shot I was on the maximum zoom but uh, as I say it's the ideal location and this time of year as well. Just uh, stopping for a little breather and um, just by me looking back south we're um, crossing that cursus again so the original line of it was uh, by the hedge there and then this is the path that we have just come up and uh, so we're continuing to head northwards we're at a sort of crossroads I suppose and you can see all these restricted byway signs and what have you we want to carry on heading north and say the cursus that uh, I think heads slightly to the left but we're going to carry on up this uh, path between the two hedges. Well, I've now made it to the edge of the Martin Down Nature Reserve. There's a very helpful little map here and uh, hopefully you can see this. So we've come up, this is Bowling Green Lane and we're here and we're going to carry on oh, where we go? No, we're going to carry on along here. This is the Bockerley Ditch or Bockerley Dyke and uh, this is just looking uh, sort of eastwards and then a very far distance at the very top of that hill is where we'll be going but uh, now the Bockley Dyke and I think it's Bockley rather than Bockley which I called it last time when I was doing the Martin walk it's uh, well originally built back in the late Bronze Age early Iron Age more of a political or cultural boundary rather than a defensive structure and it runs for about three and a half miles. The Romans didn't use it, indeed they built one of their roads straight through it but uh, when the Romans left it was remodelled and brought back into use and uh, the Romanized Celts used it to defend against the invading Saxons and in places it's 27 metres wide with a large bank on the southern side and the bank's five metre tall and the ditch in front of it can be as wide as 17 metres in places. Now I say we're going to follow it in a sort of easterly direction. Now if you look on a map there's something called the Grimm's Ditch and if I just turn the camera around that's just to the south that's something completely different it's a much more ancient uh, structure built a lot earlier um, and the difference between the two I mean the Grimm's Ditch is more of an ancient highway so it's a, um, a sort of groove with two banks either side whereas the um, Bockerley Ditch or Dyke there's just one bank and a ditch. <laughs> I'm getting some quite enchanting views and they're only going to get better as we start going even further uphill but uh, I know sometimes views don't come out quite so well on a GoPro but even so isn't that lovely now those little hummocks there I'm guessing those are um, yellow meadow ant nests um, it would It'd be a good environment for them if it very similar to those that you see at uh, Brockenhurst at uh, Barmer Lawn. We're well, still making our way along the side of the, the dike and I thought I'd point out this uh, little finger post here 
because this is actually the start of the Jubilee Trail. It's a long distance path that winds itself 90 miles across Dorset to Ford Abbey on the Somerset border. It was created to celebrate the Diamond Jubilee of the Ramblers Association and it opened in 1995. Now <laughs> it might be look a bit odd why do they start it here in the middle of nowhere but I guess they uh, it looked a bit better if it started by the dike although there is a, a car park I don't know 800 yards or so to the north. Incidentally I've just been chatting to a, a lovely lady out for a walk and she was on her um, sort of mobility scooter thing which is great just shows that uh, it's uh, accessible to all up here. Whew. A little breather halfway up. It's one of these walks where it's a good excuse to stop just to look at the views as you go along. It really is. I mean I couldn't have picked a better day really. So bright and fresh and that's looking uh, across into Hampshire. I can just about make out the spire of the church at, uh, at Martin. And in fact, we're, um, the walk that we're on at the moment is the um, Hampshire-Dorset border. So I've got Hampshire on the left and uh, Dorset on the right. Blimey, I am unfit. I'm supposed to be doing the New Forest 10k trail race in about five weeks time. I think it's going to be a struggle. <laughs> success we've made it to the top or put it this way as far as we're going to go in an easterly direction but just before we say goodbye to uh, Hampshire and go back into uh, Dorset we'll have one final look at that uh, uh, it's sometimes difficult to find words to describe these views uh, you can probably see the cars glinting there's a little National Trust car park down at the very bottom which you could always use. I did a, a walk, a video walk from Martin. Um, I'll put the link up at the end. If you haven't seen that, do check that one out. Okay, just for followers of this route, I've cut back through the dike where there's a, a little bench and then come along this path here. Um, and so the last bit, you just need to make sure you go the right way. So we don't go down that track there. Instead we head right and then just past that gate we take a footpath to the left through some woods. I've well, just come through a little wooded section. I think it's called the Blagden Plantation. There is a sign just asking you to keep your dog on the lead in that bit. Uh, but as I pass through again some more quite uh, magnificent views looking uh, over onto my right again we are set of heading southwards now so I've got a nice little wooded section on my left which is actually <laughs> cooling me down I can't believe how warm it's got it was so cold when I was back at the church aha that's the uh, post that I was looking for, meeting up with our old friend the Jubilee Trail. Well, we know where the start of that is now. So we're now going to head across this field over on a footpath. That's going to take us to Pentridge Down. Well, folks, right at the start, I promised you some magnificent views. And here we are at the top of Pentridge Down. Some quite magnificent 360 degree scenes and that's looking uh, over to the uh, to the west 
and that's Pentridge down in the valley there can just make out the church spire I hope it's not too windy for you <laughs> uh, panning round here now ahead of me there is the Penbury Knoll hill fort I'll tell you a little bit more about that when we get a bit closer and out of the wind and then panning round hopefully the sun's not going to get in your eyes and uh, there's the east now can you see a little hair going across the field but there's two my goodness there's three of them out in the field there I'll see if I can get some photos lovely scene and here we are at the Penbury Knoll Iron Age hill fort it's sort of pear shaped really just under four acres it's been damaged a lot by quarrying over the years and on the west and north there is a bank it's about 25 foot wide two foot high and on the west side there's a ditch about 25 foot wide and three foot deep and on the north there's a terrace which is about 10 foot wide and then on the east and the south there's just really a scarp of up to 25 foot wide and there is a little trig point at the top signifying that it's obviously high up but certainly a perfect place for a hill fort and I expect they uh, took in the fact that there were some magnificent views as well <laughs> well just coming off Pembury Knoll Pentridge down in the distance there we're now going to head back down into the village but we're going to be joining the Hardy Way which is uh, well, a 220 mile long distance path from Higher Bockhampton near Dorchester, which is where Thomas Hardy, our friend the novelist and poet, was born, and Stinsford, Stinsford Churchyard, which is also near Dorchester where he's buried. And basically, it, the, uh, the Hardy Way winds through Dorset and meets various locations that are linked to him. Well, and now just coming back into the village. Just a few interesting houses to look at over there. There's a, a pair of white thatched cottages, part of the manor farm, 17th century. The manor farm itself, just behind the wall there, is uh, 18th century. And then just uh, panning across on my right, that's Pentridge House, or the, the side of it anyway, formerly the rectory originally built in the 18th century with 19th century extensions and then finally virtually opposite to uh, Pentridge House is Chestnut Cottage which is possibly the oldest in the village at uh, built in the 17th century. Well folks we've come to the end of our walk we thought we'd do our end piece here at the top of Pentridge down underneath an oak tree <laughs> we've had a super walk today the sun has been out in all its glory a real spring day hope you enjoyed the walk if you did please give us a thumbs up or a like and do uh, leave a comment and as i always say if you haven't already done so please do uh, subscribe then that way hopefully you'll be able to join us for another walk sometime in the future so until we meet again thanks for watching and Shirio. You enjoy that? <laughs> Good point.